Welcome to week three of running with In this video, I want to share my thoughts about the first phase of the structured training plan that I'm following in Daniel's running formula. Let me preface this by also saying that I'm a new runner. I'm new to training. And I really like Daniel's running formula because it's very detailed and I like reading about sort of the physiology and uh, the underlying principles behind aerobic training. Here's what I did for the past three weeks. I just wanted to share some of my questions, my thoughts, my impressions. They're all intertwined with my experiences too. My first reflection concerns training by time instead of training by mileage. So in the plan, each day there's a given number of minutes that I'm running and I'm not measuring my training stress by mileage, but by time. Training this way has allowed me to sort of forget about my watch and just run by feel, knowing that I just have to run, you know, 60 minutes or 75 minutes. I have found myself not checking my watch as frequently, and so I'm just running by feel. Daniels writes that for easy running, to get the aerobic benefits, it's not about the pace at which you run it at, but it's more about the time on your feet, and you're gonna get the benefits just by putting in the time. Now, I found it really helpful for like my two hour long run. I know I have to run 120 minutes. I'm just gonna relax. I'm gonna focus on my form. And yeah, I'm not gonna worry too much about the pace, just getting my feet out there and just staying out there for two hours. But I have encountered some problems. Um, I'm still tempted to consider my mileage in my head. So let's say that I know I only have 60 minutes of running time that day and I feel good. I'm tempted to push the pace so that my total mileage at the end of the week is a little higher. So I suppose measuring your training by the time that you spend running is a better way to accurately measure the stress of your training than just the mileage covered. But I think it does raise an important training physiological question, which is, let's say that there's a runner who runs at a nine minute per mile pace for 60 minutes versus if the same runner were to run 60 minutes at a faster pace, like let's say 830 um, per mile. Does that have the same aerobic physiological benefits? Is that the same, even though the paces are different? And I think Daniel would say that is the same. Um, perhaps running slower is less stress and perhaps the same amount of benefits. If I think about my own situation, my easy pace range is about maybe 810 to 845 minute per mile pace. And if I were to truly run easy and just relax, I think it would be closer to 845. But I know that I can, you know, it wouldn't be straining, but I can focus a little bit more and push myself just a little bit and run, you know, 810. And I would still consider that an easy pace. So the question is, should I do that? Should I run 810 or should I run 845 for my easy pace? And if Daniels is correct in that the time spent running is more important, then I should be able to convince myself that running at 8.45 for a given amount of time is equally beneficial. 
One other thing that I'll add about easy running is that I know it's it's not intuitive for us to run easy or run a little slower because I think myself included, we believe that we should run faster um, and the faster we run, the better it is for our fitness. And that doesn't seem to be the case. We have to learn to run easy. And it's really hard because we see other people maybe who have the same, uh, you know, race results or we might see them post various things and it's easy to get competitive and be like, oh my gosh, this person ran easy, an easy 10 miles at like 7.30 pace when we have the same PRs and potentially the same fitness. So it is really easy to get uh, comparative with others and, and that can be unhealthy. But I think that over time, so over the course of months, over the course of years, our, um, our easy pace running will naturally go down. We just can't force it. We have to let it sort of happen naturally. And finding that line, I think is pretty tough. My second point of reflection about this first phase of the plan is about speed work. And there is a good amount of speed and intensity in the plan, at least more that I'm used to. And I think the big overarching question is, should my training focus more on volume or should it focus more on intensity? And I thought about maybe this summer I should just run all easy and just try to run as much as I can, you know, 60, 65, 70 miles per week, just just run and do no speed work. Um, but I decided against that because as someone who didn't run in high school, I didn't run in college, obviously, I'm new to running, I feel like I need um, some time devoted to working on developing speed. I personally think that I can slowly build both my volume and a little bit of intensity at the same time. And I think, hopefully, I don't get injured, I hope I don't jinx myself, but I'm, I'm hoping that this plan really does that for me. So for these past three weeks, I've done on Tuesdays a 10 by 400 meter workout. And the 400 meters were run at approximately one minute and 25 seconds per rep. And um, they were pretty fast, but they didn't feel out of control. I did it on like a little grass field. And there are also three minute recoveries. So basically full recovery before starting the next rep. And the next day I felt pretty solid. Um, I didn't feel super sore, um, didn't feel like there was a lot of lactic acid buildup. So I felt really good with those 400 meter repeats. I think that they really helped with my form and my speed. Throughout the week, I also did some strides, usually six strides. And I'm not really familiar with strides. To be honest, I haven't done them very much. But so far, I feel okay about them. They Definitely, I, I can feel like my legs aren't turning over as fast as I want them to, but uh, they seem to be helping my form. And finally, uh, the 20 minute tempo has been a struggle for me, to be honest. Um, it's just, it's a little hard for me to find the correct pace and it's definitely a harder effort. But all in all, the actual time that I'm running you know, sort of these intense, more intense paces isn't actually that long. So if I'm doing like 90 second 400 meters and I'm only doing 10, I'm only doing really 15 minutes of hard work and then plus 20 minutes of tempo. So I'm only doing like 35 minutes in the week of a little faster work. So here's what I have found to be really interesting. I think that the 400 meter repeats and the strides actually help my running form. They actually get me thinking about um, proper running form and running relaxed and running well. And I'm feeling pretty good. Like my body is recovering pretty well. And finally, I feel like the best part of the plan so far has been the two hour long runs. I've never done 120 minutes of running at a time. And the first week was a challenge for sure. I had to walk a good bit, but I brought some water. Um, I've been fueling a little better. And so they've gone really well. Like this past one, I did 120 minutes, about 840 per mile, um, about 14 miles. And my heart rate was about 119. So 
just keeping it easy but it's still challenging to finish the time and I feel like I'm getting a lot of good benefits um, just by running two hours. Two hours is a long time though so you just have to be sure that you can handle it and for me right now 120 minutes in the plan is about 25% of the total weekly running time and I would say 25% is a good percentage um, I think I would ideally like to be closer to 20% of my total running time for the week um, and I think I'll get there but I think two hours is a really good start.